Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to allow your users to type Excel style equations in any text box in your Microsoft Access forms. With this trick, you can literally have them just hit the equal sign on any text box, just like you do in Excel, and then type in an equation. And then it's going to evaluate that equation, right? 60 times five or whatever it is, and put the numeric value in that field. This is part 49 of my fitness database series, but if you don't care about fitness, that's fine. This is a series about making databases with lots of cool tips and tricks. So even if you don't care about tracking calories and all that stuff, watch the series anyways. It's really good, lots of cool stuff like today. And I'm trying to make them all so you can jump in without having to watch all the previous ones, but it's, it's helpful. All right, let's get started. And we are back, folks. Um, what we're gonna start off with today is, I wanna make it so that when we click on one of these fields, or like these fields here, I want it to select the text. Because it's a pain to have to click here. If I wanna change this, let's say to 11 o'clock, right? I gotta click here and then, oh, wait a minute, now I gotta click and select the whole thing, right? I like that with text fields, like with text fields, I might wanna click here and modify that, but with the time, usually, usually, I'm just wanna click here, have it selected automatically, right? And then type in 11 a.m. or something like that. So for the numeric fields, I'm gonna use my select all function. Now this is nothing new, I've done a video on it before, here it is, I'll put a link down below. And members, this code is in the code vault. It's right here. So I'm just going to copy that. If you're not a member, there it is. Let me zoom in for you. There it is. Get it. And I'm going to go here and go to my global module. And oh, let me resize this. And let's just paste that in down here on the bottom. And now I've got a function called sell all, which I can now use this in any of the uh, controls that I want. So I'm gonna go here and design view, and I wanna put that in all of these numeric fields as well as this guy here, and maybe quantity too. So we're gonna click on this. I'm gonna shift and select all of those, and then shift and select that guy too. And the on click event is going to be equals sell all, open close parentheses, and that's it. The select all function handles everything else. It knows what the active screen control is. So it automatically can take whatever you click on and boop, it selects all the text in there. Look at that, that's nice behavior. That's what I want. So when I click here, see, I can just type in 10 a.m. like that. Okay, now that's important because what I'm gonna do next is I wanna make it so that all of these numeric fields can function like a calculator. Now, for those of you who are real fans, you probably remember a couple of years ago, I did a seven part series called Let's Build a Calculator. We're not gonna get this crazy, although we could, we could integrate this into this database, but I don't need to go quite that hardcore just yet. Now, I also have another video where I teach you how to do math directly inside of fields. What this involves is this involves a dummy hidden field. So you make this a text field, right? So you could type in an equation in here, and then when you're done, it gets evaluated, because you can't store you know, plus signs and multiplication and parentheses and that in a numeric field. But if this is a text field, when the user updates that, you can evaluate the equation, right? And then store the numeric value in a hidden field, and then you can put whatever you wanna see here. Again, we're not gonna get this complicated either. I've got an, an even better trick I'm gonna show you. I came up, this one, the, came up with this one the other night. Basically, all I wanna do is, if I click on this field, now I've got it selected, that's why I wanna do the select all stuff first. If the first thing that I hit is equals, just like in Excel, right? If it sees equals as the first character, I want it to pop up an input box, and then I can type in the equation. Because this happens a lot, especially when I'm dealing with stupid serving sizes. You know how they give you the serving sizes, two thirds of a cup right, is, is 100 calories or whatever, but you're not gonna eat two thirds of a cup, you're gonna eat a cup, all right? So now I gotta take that two thirds of a cup and figure out what it is for a whole cup, right? Divide it by two and then multiply by three or whatever. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, if the user clicks on one of these fields, well, probably not with a time field, but with a numeric field, right? And if I type in equals three times four, I want that to get evaluated, okay? And yeah, the, the hidden field trick works great and it looks nice and, and, and all that, but then you got to do one for each of these fields. That, that other trick works fine if you got like one field to do it with. Like I did it in my account balances template just for the pending option. Cause usually you get your, your account balance, you get your, you know, uh, the total amount pending, but then you get like a bunch of other charges you might want to add up. So that's why I did that with that one field. Okay. Oh, before we get to that, there's one more little thing I want to do. If you double click on this guy, I want it to set the current time, right? This guy here. So just open that up real quick. Go to events, go to on double click right there. Okay, and we're going to say, whoops, we're going to say the default, I can't type today, default, I just did my workout for the day, so my arms are still a little shaky, <laughs> default food time text equals now, and then we want to run what happens when that guy off after updates, and it's right here, it's this guy, right, remember when you type the after update, it figures out what the time is, picks the time portion out, formats it for you, now, if you're gonna call this stuff in a bunch of different places, I usually would make this its own sub, but since I'm really only gonna do this once here, that is perfectly legal. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Once in a while I get away with this because this is actually the name of that sub and you can call that sub from other places. Some some programmers don't consider it proper to actually call the event sub. Of, I, I don't have any problems with it, it's okay. If, again, if this was something I was gonna reuse in a bunch of places, I'd make this its own subroutine. But to do it once in a while like that, that's just fine. Okay, anyways, save it, give it a quick debug compile. Let's just test it, make sure it works. I like to test everything, you know, in small steps. So if I double click now, well, it was, it is 6.59. So let's change this to 5 p.m. And now if I double click on it, it should go to 6.59. Okay, good. That's, what I, that's exactly what I wanted. That's just a little pet peeve of mine. Because sometimes I leave this form open after lunch and then I come back two hours later and I start putting stuff in and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't update this. So now it's easy just to double click on it. Okay, now let's get to the pop-up calculator. So when I click on one of these fields here, if the first thing that I press is enter, then I want to pop up that input box. All right, so I got to know what that enter key code is. Remember we talked about key codes before, right? So let's just work on calories for now. We're going to we're going to look at the key down event. We already have one in here for this field. All right, we're already checking it for the shift, right? Shift uh, or excuse me, the tab key and the shift tab key. So that's not going to affect this at all. But I need to know what the key code is if I press the equal sign. So just down here, just go status. This is how you find what, what it is. Status key, right? And then key code. And we, we'll get that just by having access. Tell us what it is. There's a code for it, it's VB, oh, what is it, VB equal, I think. VB key equal, I think it is. But you know what, I never use those. You can Google them, that's a pain. So just come over here now and just press the equal sign. Burm, it's key 187, see it? It just it just told me what the key is. That's all you need. If you wanna use VB key equal, that's fine. So if the key code equals 187, then, and I always put in the comments what it is, this is an equal sign for the calculator. And if, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna get uh, an equation or some values or whatever from the user. We gotta put it in a string. So dim s as a string. And then eventually I gotta store that and evaluate it into a long integer. We're using long integers here because all the calories and protein and all that are longs because I don't care about fractions of a calorie or fractions of a gram of protein. We, we already had that discussion but sometimes I'm throwing stuff in for the new people who are coming in midstream. I've noticed a lot of people are coming in in the middle of the series. All right, so now we need to put that actual value in a long integer as well, okay? So let's get it, S equals input box, enter equation, or values, whatever, right? Calculator. Okay, so we're gonna type some stuff in. If they hit cancel or don't type anything in, we wanna exit sub and not do anything. So if S equals blank, then exit sub. If you want, you could set the field back to nothing or whatever it was before or do an undo. There's a million options here. I just want to exit the sub. Okay, now let's start L equals zero or whatever default value you want. And we're going to say L equals eval S. 
eval is a function that evaluates a string of characters and tries to form a number out of it, basically. You can have a, an equation in there or whatever you want, as long as it evaluates to a number. In fact, I cover eval in that math and fields video I showed you earlier. Now, the problem is, if they type in something that can't be evaluated to a number, let's say they type the word Joe in here, it'll throw an error, okay? We don't want an error, so that's why I started this off at zero. Right above this, we're gonna go on error, resume next. So if this throws an error, we're gonna ignore it, in which case L will end up as zero, okay? And then we're gonna say on error, go to zero. That turns error handling back on. You don't wanna leave error handling off because then if you get an unexpected error, then you have no idea what's going on, just your code won't work. I talk about this a lot in my debugging videos. Okay, got lots of videos on error handling and debugging. I got a whole separate uh, advanced debugging course in my developer series, so lots of good debugging stuff. And of course, there's my old favorite song. How's it go? 99 bugs in the code, 99 bugs in the code. Take one down, patch it around. 107 bugs in the code. <laughs> All right, anyways. All right, so at this point, we've either got some numeric value or zero. And now we can say calories per unit, which is the field we're on equals L, right? Now we gotta swallow that key code. Swallowing the key code means the user hit equals to get here, but I don't wanna put that equals in the field, so we gotta swallow it. How do we swallow it? Key code equals zero. Really easy. Okay, and that's it. Now if you're gonna have more stuff after this point and you might, run into some conflicts, put an exit sub in here, put an exit sub in there, but these, these shouldn't conflict with each other. Save it, debug, compile, close it, close it, open it. I forgot to say debug, compile once in a while. All right, ready? Click here. And now we're gonna go equals, oh, look at that, it popped up, 30 times two. Enter, there's your 60. Let's go to a new one. I'm, this is my, actually my food for the day. I don't want to mess things up. So I'm going to come over here. New stuff. Right? Okay. Equals 100 times 4. Enter. Look at that. Equals 12 times parentheses 2 plus 6. That should be what? 8 times 12? Boom. 96. See? You can put any kind of equation that you want in there and it'll calculate it. Isn't that cool? And if you can remember Excel, you'll remember what triggers it. Just hit equals. I think that's a whole lot easier than the other methods that I showed you with the hidden text. I mean, this, is, you know, you get the input box. You could make your own custom dialogue for this input box, or you could throw in my calculator that I had before if you want from the calculator class, whatever works for you. All right, let me get rid of this now here. Delete. Now, here's the thing. What I showed you works great for this one field. Now you got a couple options. You can copy this and put it in the key down event for every field that you want to have this functionality, or you could make this a global function just like we did with the cell all and have it look at the field that it's in. And we will do that in the extended cut for the members. We're gonna make a global calculator function, call it do calculator and it'll work with any field on any form. Just gotta do a couple little tweaks and it'll work. And that's gonna be in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases that I build in the tech help videos and you get the code vault. We've all seen how uh, valuable that code vault is. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Most of my classes, if I got code, it goes in the code vault. So check it out. So that is gonna do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more.
Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.